من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي دلو شيب الله آلي وصلين تسليم Respected brothers, respected elders, mothers and sisters listening at home Abdullah ibn Sabah, the hypocrite of Jewish origin, originally from Yemen, who came to Medina to Munawwara, pretending to be a Muslim, pretending to be a very pious man, but again, a man who played this very malicious role against the Muslimin, especially during the Khilafat of Sayyidina Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. He was a very shrewd man. And in the last session, all was explained of what the Sabai sect would really do and how they would go around influencing people. I wish not to repeat myself but in Egypt this man found refuge with the Egyptians Abdullah ibn Sabah a lot of the Egyptians were new Muslims anyway and for him Egypt was the right place far away from Medina to Munawwara there he pretended to be a great sheikh a muhaddis of his time and Aliyazu Billah preaching uh, the wrong Islam to the people and giving the wrong interpretation to the verses of the Quran. The date that he chose for the push forward, for the rebellion against the people of Medina to Munawwara, against Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an was again intentionally chosen by the shrewd man Abdullah ibn Sabah. He chose the 11th year of the Khilafat of Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala corresponding to the Islamic date which was the year 34 Hijri which was the 11th year of the Khilafat of Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala now this man had key partners in all of the provinces Basra, Kufa, Syria, Egypt and even Medina al Munawwara. But his main partner was a man whose name was Yazid ibn Qais in Kufa. Now remember this is the other Yazid, not the Yazid that will come later on when we cover the Khilafat of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. This is Yazid ibn Qais, different man. This was someone who was very, very close to Abdullah ibn Sabah and the main man who was spreading the Sabai sect in Kufa. He was corresponding with all of his partners in the different provinces. He said to Yazid ibn Qais that this is the best opportunity we have. If we are going to remove Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an from his position of Khilafat from the high seat of being the Khalifa of the Muslimin it is this year which is the most uh, suitable year for all the Sabai sects the reason for that was 
Kufa was completely empty from prominent Sahaba Kiram Ajma'in in the year 34. So much so that even the governor was out from Kufa. Hazrat Sa'id ibn al As, he was out from Kufa visiting Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala. An. Majority of the senior Sahaba Kiram Ajma'in were engaged in jihad fi sabilillah. And only a few handful of companions that were there. So when Sa'id ibn al As left Kufa, he gave charge to the great Mujahid Ka'ka at Tamimi. So Ka'ka at Tamimi was in charge, and his deputy was Amr ibn Huwairis. Amr ibn Huwairis. The two individuals were in charge of Kufa. But at the same time you had Yazid ibn Qas slowly, he had a following. And brothers know that the path of shaitan spreads very very quickly. But it's not long lasting. That's the difference. That it spreads very very quickly, but it, it's not long lasting. And so slowly the Sabai sect was spreading all over Kufa. And Yazid ibn Qas again saying Labbaik to the master Abdullah ibn Sabah and saying that this is the right opportunity given to us. He would meet all the Sabai people in the masjid of Kufa. Slowly meetings were taking place with the intention to overthrow Aliyazu Billah Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. And we've covered everything, we've explained everything thoroughly, the reason Alhamdulillah, we want to continue from where we had left off. Ka'ka radiallahu ta'ala an was very vigilant. He was a man who knew that Yazid ibn Qais would come to the masjid frequently and that there was a possibility that they were conspiring against Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. And immediately Hazrat Ka'ka came to the masjid and he arrested all of the people that were in the masjid, including Yazid ibn Qais. He arrested every single one of them. And he said that I am arresting you, all of you, because I feel that you are going against the Khalifa, Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. An. But somehow the Sabai sect managed to convince Hazrat Ka'ka that we were only gathering in the masjid not for the removal or to depose Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an from his position but we just thought that when Hazrat Sa'id comes back as our governor we want to put some new proposals to him and so Hazrat Ka'aka again uh, he was a mujahid he was not a governor governor was Sa'id ibn al-As and he felt that again how was it possible for him to arrest someone without solid proof? There was no proof. And so they would just come and meet in the masjid. And what he did is that he warned them. And he said, make sure that what you tell me is the truth. There should be no conspiracy against the Khilafat and the people of Madinatul Munawwara. Remember in Madinatul Munawwara, that is the city where all of the companions were. They wanted to be close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Except for those, of course, that were engaged in jihad fi sabilillah. Now, Ka'aka was monitoring the move of Yazid ibn Qais. Yazid ibn Qais knew that it was going to be very difficult for him now to move around freely in Kufa, but he did not also want to miss this opportunity. Kufa is all empty. And perhaps we can use the city of Kufa as a launching pad to push the people away from Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an, and once and for all to remove Hazrat Usman from his position of being a Khalifa. So Kufa for the Sabai people was a, a very important location, a strategic location for them, even more important than Egypt. Egypt's a bit far away, but Kufa was even closer. So they were concentrating now, because Abdullah ibn Sabah was already in Egypt, they were concentrating now in Kufa. What Yazid ibn Qais did, he hired a man and gave him a lot of money and said to him, immediately I want you to go 
and go to all of the provinces and meet all the Sabai people. Sabai as in those that follow Abdullah ibn Sabai. So all of them meet them and tell them immediately to come and meet me in Kufa and we need to regroup in Kufa. Now a lot of the people were in the area of Al Jazeera. Al Jazeera is an area which was given to the brother of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid. The brother's name was Hazrat Abdul Rahman. So that Khalid bin Walid and Abdul Rahman both were brothers. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, what he would do, if he would hear of the mischief of the Sabai sect, in order to punish them, he would banish them to Al Jazeera. And they would go to Al Jazeera, and Hazrat Abdul Rahman would punish them. Hazrat Abdul Rahman was a man who was very, very strong in character, just like his brother. And when he would find these Sabai people, he would say, ah, I am not as soft as Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. Hazrat Usman was a soft-hearted man. He says, come to me and I will show you. And Hazrat Abdul Rahman would punish them and make sure that whatever they do, it is in front of Hazrat Abdul Rahman. So what he said, especially go to the zone of Al Jazeera and make sure that in the night, all of them, all the Sabai people leave Al Jazeera, Syria, Basra, and immediately they come to Kufa. And this is what had happened. In the morning, Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, uh, Hazrat uh, Abdul Rahman bin Walid, when he went to visit the people in Al Jazeera, he noticed that the Sabai people had left Al Jazeera. And all of them had run off to Kufa to meet up with Yazid ibn Qais. So now all of the Sabai sect from the Arabian Peninsula now come to Kufa to meet Yazid ibn Qais. But again, the key player who is actually controlling everything, is the man from Egypt whose name is Abdullah ibn Sabah. Abdullah ibn Sabah, and the mouthpiece piece is Yazid ibn Qais. He's the speaker, but the main man who's controlling everything is from Egypt, Abdullah ibn Sabah. When they come, now imagine the lies and the faults that we talk about, and how uh, the turmoil actually started, the fitna. Ashtar an nakhai Ashtar... An Nakhai also came amongst the people who came from Al Jazeera and from the different locations to Kufa. And Ashtar An Nakhai came and all of them gathered in the masjid. So now you had thousands of people in Kufa. And Ashtar An Nakhai stood up and he said to the people in the masjid, remember the governor is not there and you only have Ka'aka. And Hazrat Ka'aka came to the masjid to see what was happening. And he said that I come to all of you in Kufa and I am appointed from Hazrat Usman bin Affan. This was a lie. Okay. Hazrat Usman in Madinatul Munawwara knows nothing of this. And he says, I have been appointed from the Khalifa himself, Usman bin Affan, and I come to you with information that Hazrat Usman has decided. And also your governor, Sa'id ibn al-As has decided. Allahu Akbar. And this was not true at all, of course. Hazrat Usman did not know this. Hazrat Sa'id ibn al-As did not know this. And he said, what Hazrat Usman and your governor has requested, that we must stop the cash flow that is coming into Kufa, and we must reduce the stipends that have been allocated to the people of Kufa. Of course, this caused an uproar to reduce the stipend. And this is what they wanted. And people started shouting in the masjid. And these were the Sabai sect. Did I not tell you, Yazid ibn Qais stood up, that your governor is your enemy? Did I not tell you that your governor is your enemy? And it is your governor that is conspiring against us, the people of Kufa. And taking this opportunity, this is how fitna works, this was their plan. All lies, pack of lies. Remember we did not have technology then, that someone could just use the mobile phone or email someone, is this true, verify that, you can't do that. Immediately they came and everything was very very fast. The, the man in charge was not there, Saeed ibn al-As was not there. Yazid ibn Qais stands up and he said, that is it. Who wants to volunteer and who will come with me? 
so that we stop Sa'id ibn al-As from entering into Kufa. We will block him on the road. We will block him as he comes. As he leaves Madinatul Munawwara, we will stop him. We will not allow him entry into Kufa. It is said that thousands of people volunteered just to stop Hazrat Sa'id ibn al-As. Allahu Akbar. Sa'id ibn al-As radiyallahu ta'ala an. It is said that he stopped at a place called Jarrah. When he stopped there, uh, a thousand people of Kufa, Sabai people, were marching a go- uh, 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 to the region of Jarrah. And that is where they met Hazrat Sa'id ibn al-As radiyallahu ta'ala an. And they said that we don't want you as a governor, we want you to go back to Madinatul Munawwara with Osman bin Affan radiyallahu ta'ala an. And so Hazrat Sa'id ibn al-As looked at an army of a thousand men and he said to them, have a thousand people gathered here just to give me this information that I must return back to Madinah til Munawwara? What are your intentions? And they said, our intentions are very clear. We don't want you as our governor. So Hazrat Sa'id ibn al-As said, if you don't want me as an appointed governor, who do you want as a governor? And they said, we want Musa al-Ashari radiallahu ta'ala an as a governor. Now, Hazrat Sa'id ibn al-As was a very wise man. Very wise man. He would work with hikmah. And so what he did, he said, it is fine, I will turn away from you. And I will return back to Madinatul Munawwara. And when he came to Madinatul Munawwara, he met with Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. And he said, I met with a thousand strong men an army of people that wanted me out of Kufa and they say that they don't want me as a governor. Hazrat Usman said they are going against the judgment of a Khalifa. Again just to calm the situation. Hazrat Sa'id ibn al-As said Amir al-Mu'mineen they are not going against you they are going against me. What they said is that they want Hazrat Musa al-Ashari radiallahu ta'ala an to be the governor. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an said to Hazrat Sa'id ibn al-As that I want you to stay here in Madinatul Munawwara and he said to Musa al-Ashari that I want you to go to Kufa and you become the governor and he said to the people I, will, I won't give the rebels any excuse to go against the people of Madinatul Munawwara if they want Musa al-Ashari radiallahu ta'ala an then so be it and so Hazrat Musa al-Ashari radiallahu ta'ala an was appointed as the governor for Kufa. Now there were a few companions. Hazrat Ka'aka radiallahu ta'ala an was very very strong. What he wanted, he said to the sincere Muslims that we must do jihad with, with this group of people. But the second man, the deputy in charge, Amr ibn Huwairi said that no, we must not do anything without the permission of Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. You had certain companions, a handful, very few. People like Hazrat Huzaifa ibn Yaman who were given the knowledge of all the fitans that will occur until the day of Qiyamah. And he would actually meet with the sincere Muslims. And he would say to them that whatever you are seeing now has been foretold by Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned everything. And so this fitna will start. And the fitna starts immediately after the shahadat of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab. Radiallahu ta'ala an. And so when Musa al-Ashari radiallahu ta'ala an came to Kufa, before leading them to prayers, he put a condition forward to them. And he said to them, I will be your governor per your request, but with one condition. I want all of you to pledge and tell me the truth that all of you will listen to Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an and you will never go against him. And these Sabai people were liars. And all of them said that if you are our governor, we will respect Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an aliyazu billah. And remember, uh, their propaganda was that the wish of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was for Hazrat Ali to become the Khalifa, not Hazrat Uthman bin Affan. So this is a valid jihad. To remove Hazrat Usman from his position. Anybody 
who participates in this jihad to remove Hazrat Usman, Aliyazubillah, will be rewarded. So that you can reinstate Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala. This was their, their propaganda. And this is how they would promote the campaign of jihad of Aliyazubillah overthrowing Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, and all of the senior companions that were there. So that Musa al-Ashari radiallahu ta'ala an, took power and he was the governor. In Madinatul Munawwara, some of the Sahabai Kiram Ajma'een, companions like Muhammad ibn Maslama, Talha ibn Ubaidullah, they came to Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, and they said that, Hazrat, why don't you choose a few companions of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And companions that were very, very close even to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and send them to the different provinces and seek information, see the conditions of the governors and how the governors are treating the people and how the people, the public, general public is treating the governors. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala accepted this mashwara and he selected a, a, a few close companions of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Usama ibn Zaid, Muhammad ibn Maslama, and also Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar and Hazrat Ammar ibn Yasar, Hazrat Ammar ibn Yasir radiallahu ta'ala an. And so all of these companions went. Some went to Kufa, some went to Basra, some went to Syria, some went to Egypt. And Hazrat Usman said, I want you to stay there and monitor the situation properly, what is happening. After a few weeks, all of the inspectors come back, Sahabai Kiram Ajma'een come back, except for one man whose name is Ammar ibn Yasir. Ammar ibn Yasir was sent to Egypt. He came a week later, but he did come. And all of the companions that came, came with positive information. And they said to Hazrat Usman bin Affan that these are false rumors against the governors. And these false rumors that were spreading were spreading by the false letters and the works of the Sabai sect. And, and he said that Alhamdulillah all of the governors are judging people in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah. Every single one of them. And Hazrat Ammar ibn Yasir even said that even in Egypt and the public generally are happy with the governors, there is nothing wrong with the governors. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an was very happy. And he found no reason to dismiss the governors. Even then, look at the ahtiyad, the precaution that Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an takes. He wrote to all of the governors and he said that I want you to make a public announcement. That if amongst the people, if someone has a complaint to file against the governors that have been appointed by Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala an, then I want them to come for Hajj, because all of the governors come for Hajj, and meet me during the time of Hajj, and I will personally look into the query. This is what Sayyidina Usman bin Affan said. Now how old was Hazrat Usman bin Affan? How old was he then? Have a good guess. Yeah? No, no, 82 years of age. The Mujahid. Hazrat Usman, an 82 year old man still has the strength and the courage and the power that any complaint against his governors, he wants to make sure that he has checked everything properly and appropriately to make sure that everything is running in accordance to the Sharia. An 82 year old man is still saying, that come for Hajj and I will personally look into your query. And this is the 11th year of the Khilafat of Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. Allah give him jazai khair. Zunnu rain, subhanallah, zunnu rain. Uh, and we must make sure that when Allah blesses us with children, we must name our children Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. Beautiful names, names of the companions. Choose the best names. Why? Because names have an impact. Name have an impact even in the character. The, the making of the character, subhanallah, the name plays a, a very important role. Very important role. That is why you will often find people 
who are Uthman tend to be very rich. <laughs> now this is not in the Quran or the Hadith. Huh? <laughs> in case someone asks me, Amal Isa, where is this in the Hadith? No. Uh, that's what they say, Wallahu Alam. Allah knows best. Allahu Alam. Allah knows best. And they say that Umar are meant to be people who are physically very, very strong. And, you know, at times they can get very angry. I uh, have Umar just in front of me here. But, subhanallah, what we need to understand, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sammu awladakum bis salihin. Give your children beautiful names. And so name them Uthman, name them Ali, mashaAllah. These are beautiful, beautiful names. And so, Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an told all of the governors to make sure this announcement is made publicly. Hazrat Amir Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala an, who was very very close to Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an, an incredible Sahabi. Amir Muawiyah, in fact the title Amir was given to him. He, was, he had the leadership qualities in him from a very young age. That is why they titled him to be Amir. His name was not Amir, his name was Muawiyah. But this was a natural title that would befit him. And they would say, Amir Muawiyah. Who is here? Amir Muawiyah. He's always the Amir. All the leadership qualities were in him. And he was the man who was in charge of Syria. He gave mashwira to Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. And he said to Hazrat Uthman bin Affan, I want you to do hijrah to migrate from Medina to Munawwara and to settle with me in Syria so that maximum security is granted to you. Maximum security is given to you. Right now, even in Medina to Munawwara, perhaps the situation is not right. A lot of the Mujahideen are out doing jihad close to the borders of the Islamic Empire. Medina to Munawwara is an open city, no military. But if you come to Syria, because it is close to the Roman borders, and there's a military there, and uh, Hazrat Amir Muawiyah was just a man, he said, we will give you maximum security. Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and said to Amir Muawiyah, you want me to compromise my position, and you want me to leave uh, the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And he said, how is that possible? Hazrat Usman radiallahu ta'ala and said, even if the enemies were to cut off my head, that would please me, rather than to leave the city of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He said, never ever put this request in front of me again. He said to Amir Muawiyah, I will never leave Medina to Munawwara. This is where I am and this is where I will die. And I will be close to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Amir Muawiyah had all of the companions, including Hazrat Ali, had a lot of love and affection for Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. Hazrat Amir Muawiyah then said to Hazrat Usman, Amir al-Mu'mineen, if you don't wish to come to Syria, then let me send an army of strong men to Medina to Munawwara to protect you. Who are these Sabai people? I will send an army to protect you. And so you give me permission and I will send an army of men to Medina to Munawwara and everything will be right. Hazrat Uthman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an again said, I wish not to exhaust the provisions of the people of Medina to Munawwara. I wish not to exhaust the provisions for the people of Medina to Munawwara. Now if an army comes of 5,000 in Medina to Munawwara uh, to serve them food and to cater for them, Alhamdulillah, allow the people of Medina to be free. Allow the people of Medina to be free. And he said to Hazrat Amir Muawiyah, I don't want no one. Allah is my muhafiz and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my protector. And it's not that Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala an was a man who was not sure of what was happening around. Subhanallah, he was a great leader. A great leader. Usman bin Affan, it is said that in fact, a lot of preparations were made. He had selected two individuals. One was Zuhri and the other man's name was Makhzumi. From the Zuhri tribe and the Makhzumi tribe. These two individuals were actually punished by Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala. 
And Hazrat Usman had appointed them and said to them, I want you to go and spy for the people of Medina and I want you to meet the leaders of the Sabai sect, extract the information from them, what, what they are planning and plotting, and come and tell me. And so, any man who would see al Mahzumi and Zuri, they would feel very confident and they would open up to these two individuals thinking that these two are the people who have been punished by the people of Medina Tul Munawwara anyway. But yet they were sincere. And they came and they met all of the main leaders of the Sabai sect and all of their plans and plots, their information was given to al Maghzumi. And the plan was eventually when these two individuals came to Medina Tul Munawwara, Hazrat Usman bin Affan was sitting in the masjid and said, now tell me, what information do you bring? And they said, Hazrat, it is not good news but bad news. It is not good news but bad news. They have decided that in the coming year they will come for Hajj and they will come in their thousands with the intention to to do Hajj. If brothers remember many years ago, the Shia sect also came and they were doing Hajj, if you remember. Do you remember? Many, many years ago. They came and then the trouble and the panic they caused in uh, in the haram itself a lot of shooting even the even the saudi army was not prepared they came with weapons and the intention was al iyazu billah al iyazu billah to exhume the bodies of Hazrat abu bakr and umar farooq and to get rid of them and they said that the two are not worthy to be buried close to Hazrat muhammad mustafa mushtaba sallallahu alayhi wasallam and that is history. Wallahi lazeem. If you don't know history, then study history. We, we get excited very quickly. Oh, is this what happened? Is this what happened? Read the khutbah of the great imam of Masjid and Nabwi, Huzaifi. Read that khutbah. Even a booklet has been printed. The great imam of Masjid and Nabwi, Sheikh Huzaifi and his Friday khutbah. And the same procedure, the same plan with Hazrat Usman bin Affan. Information given to him, Hazrat, not good news. They wish to come in their thousands next year with the ihram, with the hajj, with the intention. And when they come for hajj after hajj, they will come towards Madinatul Munawwara and they will besiege the city of Madinatul Munawwara and they will force you out. They want you out from your position to depose you from your position as being a khalifa. And if you show any uh, resistance, what they will do, they are even prepared al iyazu billah to kill you and to assassinate you. Allah. And Hazrat Usman bin Affan said, Who are there anyone with the Sabai sect from the people of Medina? And they said, Yes, three people are with the Sabai sect who are actually giving all the information to the Sabai sect. And so Hazrat Usman bin Affan sat with the group of the companions, Sahaba Kiram Ajma'een. And all of, this, all of the companions unanimously agreed that the three in Madinatul Munawwara must be beheaded. All of them should be executed and killed. Hazrat Usman bin Affan radiallahu ta'ala and said, No, we will not kill them, we will pardon them. Yeah. We will pardon them. Why we have no proof just yet? I have no proof. Hazrat Usman is saying, that whether it is their intention or not, I don't want people to say that Hazrat Usman bin Affan is killing his own people. That he is killing his own people without people uh, taking any actions against Hazrat Usman bin Affan. Nothing has happened. There is no proof. This is what you say. But if we speak to them, they will deny it. They will say, no, that is not our intention. And if we haven't got proof, the only proof is what you tell me. How is it possible for Usman bin Affan to behead someone without proof? What have they done? Uh, for something in the future, whatever they do, we can uh, caution them. But as Usman bin Affan said that we will monitor them, we will explain to them, and inshallah, maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide them. We end here, my respected brothers and elders.
اللهم صل على سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد النبي الامي وعلى اله وسلم تسليما اللهم تقبل منا وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم اللهم انا نسالك العفو والعافيه في الدنيا والاخره اللهم انا نسالك من خير ما سالك منه نبيك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من شر ما سعادك منه نبيك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وانت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله سمعنا واطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإلي. المصير برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين